Okay, so this is the one? back panel of the transmitter that's going to replace the Collins transmitter. Okay. So being that the Collins transmitter is called the 32V, this is going to be called the T-32V. Okay. So it'll basically have the about the same output, uh -huh. but it'll be uh, it'll be on the frequency band that the Collins missing. Okay. So we just got this all drilled out today. The parts are put back up on the shelf. These are all for sockets, terminal strips, little choke. Be some sockets with some uh, mechanical relays in there. And then, do you want to point out what's on the other panel? Yeah. Okay, so on the other panel in here, Jeff did quite a bit of work <clears throat> on this half of the uh, panel here, so which is... the tuning unit goes there. It'll basically mirror <laughs> this entire panel. Right. And that was uh, not fun for him. Um, so he took off earlier and I completed the uh, upper part, which this will be two uh, Westinghouse meters that I punched out with the Greenlee... Uh, uh, punch deal. So we'll have three indicator lights which will look like yeah, th these little dial code yeah. kind of lights will go here and then uh, these type of toggle switches right here will go in these middle holes and then the last holes will be these uh, military uh, fuses. Those will go through there. Two more switches here and then there'll be two uh, pot meters here. Nope. Tiny rheostats. Or yeah, what are they? variable yeah. resistors. Little variable resistors will go here. One for the voltage and the other for the bias, bias voltage. Yeah. So again, this right here is basically... Uh, we put that right over here. The other way. This way? No, no. that was right. Yeah. yeah, you had it right. Yeah, so this will basically be like this. So we can take this entire unit and it'll be a custom panel so this is not easy stuff. Pretty straightforward, but man, it's time consuming. Yeah, wait till they get to and, the insides. Uh, <laughs> and costly, get all the parts and yeah. uh, if you can even find them. Luckily, we're, we're having pretty good luck. So this whole thing will be a tuning unit and what is this part of it? That's the meters. Okay. It's controls, so like turning the plate voltage on and off. Mm -hmm. So the tuning unit has the master oscillator that determines the frequency and then it's got the power amplifier which amplifies that to about about 100 watts but this thing will have about the same power output as the Collins uh -huh. it frequency won't be as stable because it won't have that precision oscillator but the stability is is not that critical with this if that one's 10 cycles this one's a hundred uh -huh. anything within a hundred cycle plus or minus is uh, yeah within the stability factor of this okay so basically, this came out of a World War II transmitter that used triodes, and this is going to be adapted to use uh, beam power tubes instead. So at some point, we'll compare this with the, uh, the picture of the original um, Army Air Corps B-17 aircraft 100-watt uh, radio transmitter. So this that's is what, what this would have been out of? of? Yeah. yeah, that's what the tuning unit came out of. Bomber. So, yeah, so as you see, this unit will be a lot more compact, uh -huh. but it'll be a little less bulletproof. But it'll still be pretty strong. Yeah. So there's going to be about 40 pounds of transformers hanging on the back of this thing, so it's going to be pretty tough to reinforce it all. But uh -huh. And there's not going to be a lot of extra room inside, which seems to be typical with all this stuff. There's dozens of resistors and capacitors that have to go in there. and little choke coils and pilot lamp transformers, three tubes and all their sockets and their resistors and uh, it's going to be quite a load to put this thing together, all the little metal frames to hold uh -huh. the turret strips and right. so just because the front panel's punched doesn't mean that it's done. <laughs> but it'll be a masterpiece when it's done, I'm looking forward to it. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's just some random uh, extra couple little things. This is the power amp here that'll have uh, two uh, iMac tubes. Yeah. 
and this is the chassis right here uh, four inch tall chassis mounted we're going to do it pretty much kind of the same concept as the amp up here with the eight tens except a lot of this lid and boxed kind of frame for structural support and everything was kind of an afterthought so this one we're um, building it in from the beginning it'll be uh, better easier to work with so just waiting for the uh, metal for the uh, gusset strips and we'll have some three quarter by three quarter um, bars coming across just like the other unit and so I'm going to be uh, creating the, the frame and it'll have triangle gussets here where it's going to be open on the sides but there'll be a couple shielding plates and stuff and that will basically sit at the same level as the audio rack but on the RF rack in this section right here and then on the front it's pretty much going to kind of be um, a similar layout uh, to this amp right here so except four full-size meters yeah four full-size meters the window will be down between the lower meters yeah it'll be right here yeah. and that's where you can see the iMac tubes yeah. in there and so that'll be another drilling and uh, punch process to uh, create all that and then so I got this spectrum analyzer just to uh, kind of learn a little bit more about what's going on here because I'm not familiar with all the function on this I know it can sweep and you can look at all these peaks and uh, coils and all this kind of stuff I pretty much have only used this for that Bedini RPX sideband generator uh, just for my own reference to actually see the sidebands and when we have those manufactured I actually take this over there and they test every single unit twice before and after potting it to make sure that it's uh, working right but there's a lot of functionality in here I only know you know a fraction of 1% of how to even use this thing um, we're kind of doing some of the similar type of uh, uh, bandwidth kind of tests and just kind of seeing what this spectrum analyzer is showing should be yeah keep going keep going there we go uh, right here and so these are the frequencies uh, center upper and lower that this measured in kilocycles so we have uh, seven digits yeah, of, I want to uh, point out that they are not evenly spaced like we expected yeah so between center and upper it's less is uh, le less of a distance than center to lower and that's with the same uh, Collins setup with the same uh, current coils in that 7.8 megahertz range or 7800 kilocycle range kind of interesting how the uh, upper and lower frequency was 0.298 kilocycle zero and 15.298 exactly 15 that was kind of some strange uh, synchronicity or whatever you want to call it but the multiplication factor was 521 and so you know uh, Eric and myself are not familiar with all the function on this and the readings and because it looked a little bit strange what we did was we used this Simpson uh, voltmeter and then we took the um, BNK signal generator and we put it on one kilocycle because Eric said if you take these leads and you have them twisted it's accurate up to about 10 kilocycle on this uh, AC reading and so where the needle would be peaked at 2.5 volts what we did was we set that voltage uh, to the hundredths of a volt right to where this was exactly peaked and then we decreased that voltage until it was at 7.07 .07. and uh, to see if that if the amplitude in the DBM and what does DBM stand for? Decibels with reference to one milliwatt. So that's an actual power reading. Yeah. And we used whatever reference point we used. It's arbitrary. It could be any number here, but I just increased the amplitude until it peaked where it was right on a cross line and what we did was we decreased that voltage on the signal generator until the Simpson verified that it was down to 70 percent and it was exactly a 3 dBm drop where we had the units on dB and the scales were one decibel per division and so as we dropped it 3 it corresponded exactly with 70.07 .07, which means the numbers that we got on here were, at, were uh, accurate. Yeah, so you, you 3 could, dB means half the power half the power. So at 70.7% of the voltage, you have 
fifty percent of the power. Okay. Because the square root of fifty percent is seventy point seven percent, roughly. Okay. So then another thing that we're going to be doing right here is uh, with the same Collins, which will be transmitting on the resonant frequency in the 7800 kilocycle range. With these current coils is uh, earlier Eric was doing some more of the tube, you know, lighting up from about a foot away. But what you notice up here is that we have a, uh, there's a little triangle piece of uh, uh, copper sheet uh, going up to a peak from uh, one of the rings on the end of the, uh, current coil and we're going to get a freestanding little uh, flame coming off of it and then what we're going to do is with my mobile phone I'm going to put on a uh, a uh, uh, some music like Bach maybe violin or piccolo or something like that um, where it's kind of a sharp uh, instrument and then the uh, headphone jack output is going to the microphone input uh, just like the little flame speaker uh, by the time you see this you'll have seen the little flame speaker where it was uh, the two little terminals off the tuning unit and this is going to do one where Eric just lit a flame off of here which is maybe about mm, almost four times uh, bigger you'll see it right here it started Hundred watts. At least a hundred watts is what's going in. I don't know what percentage of it is coming out in the fire, but yeah, it's really hard to focus on that. Might have to turn the lights off, but it's I mean, nice and quiet and yeah. stable, so it'd be a good uh, music. Okay. And we'll use the spectrum analyzer to make sure we're not over modulating. Okay. So that's mean, what we got to do next is center the spectrum analyzer to the uh, transmitter. Okay. Okay, so we're just kind of fine-tuning this thing. We got the spectrum analyzer set so that the the frequency of 7.824 or so, which is pretty close to the peak, uh, will be right here, and the amplitude will come about 90% of the screen. And then with the uh, triangle piece of metal coming to a point, that'll have the little flame. Then I have the uh, cell phone, as I mentioned. Uh, this will be... Bach violin sonata number one in G minor. I can't read the rest of it, but it's a fairly constant um, violin sound without too many ups and downs because that'll put it out, right? Or, yeah, over modulate. And so again, that's going to the microphone. So in the past, the little flame speaker was, you know, very very small. This flame is about maybe four times bigger. It was this hundred watt? Yeah. Well, this is monopolar. So monopolar. This is bipolar. This is monopolar. Okay. okay, so this is monopolar 100 watt uh, flame speaker playing some Bach. Hit play. What's that? You mean to hit play yeah. yet? Okay, it should be going. I turned the heater off. Let's try no 
another piece of music. We're set. I'm, I'm happy. This is what I was after and we got it. All right. But this somehow this is not measuring the